Welcome to the Maryland Mortgage Rate Weekly Market Update for the week of February 9th, 2015. Hello, I'm John Thomas with Primary Residential Mortgage. Here to give you an update. Well, last week was not kind to Maryland Mortgage Rates. They did spike higher to end the week. Take a look at the bond chart on the screen. You can see we hit that ceiling of resistance there with that green candle the previous week. We recommended locking your rate to start the week because we thought if it didn't break through that ceiling of resistance, it would sell off and we were correct. You can see the big red candle there on Tuesday. Um, it, it opened a gap down lower on Wednesday. Tried to find a bottom Wednesday and Thursday, you can see with the green candles, but then Friday, big sell off after the uh, jobs report was released on Friday. Big red candle down, broke through the floor of support to 25 day moving average, got a lot of room to still move lower to get to the 50 day moving average, which would be the next level of support. So, since we've still got some movement down on the bond and as it sells off, rates go higher, we're going to recommend locking your Maryland mortgage rate to start the week because the bonds we think are going to continue to sell off till they hit that 50 day moving average. Um, we are still bullish on the bond long term, but short term, if you close in the next 30 or 60 days, go ahead and lock in your Maryland mortgage rate because it could get worse before it gets better. Now, if you're on an extended closing, new construction, you're closing six, past 60 days out, go ahead and float. We're still bullish on the bond, but short term, lock it in. Now, let's dig into the economic reports. The big report was the jobs report released by the uh, Department of Bureau of Labor Statistics. That came out on Friday. It showed 257,000 jobs were created. That was above the 235,000 expected. Um, very good report, but the big news was they revised November and December's report higher by 147,000 jobs. That was huge. Now, if we look at the last three months, they've averaged 336,000 jobs per month. That's the best three month period in the last 17 years. Now, if we dig into the report further though, the unemployment rate actually ticked up from 5.6 to 5.7 percent, but we would expect that if the labor market's improving because people that have not been looking for work would come back into the market and start being counting in the unemployment rate. The labor force participation rate did tick up slightly, 62.9 percent. Remember that measures how many people are actually working, so we would expect that to tick up if we're creating more jobs. Um, but it's still hovering at a 40 year low, so we need the LFPR to come up a lot more. The biggest concern for me when I look at that jobs report is we know the energy sector lost jobs. For example, just in the oil rigs themselves, they lost 70,000 jobs in January because there was a uh, the rig count dropped 10.5%. Now those jobs aren't showing up in the report yet. We know they're going to show up. We know the energy sector is going to continue to lose jobs at oil at around $50 a barrel. So that's going to come soon. That's going to weigh on the labor market, but that could actually be good news for mortgage bonds because if the stock market sells off on a bad uh, jobs report, the mortgage market could benefit. Then we saw the weekly initial jobless claims released on Thursday. They, they ticked higher 11,000 claims to 278,000 claims for the week. But again, not seeing the energy sector jobs being lost and people filing for unemployment claims. They probably got severance packages. They still got payouts for payroll. So we're looking for that weekly initial jobless claim number to start moving up as we get the uh, energy sector people start filing for unemployment claims. And again, that could be bond friendly news. That's why we're bullish long term on the bond. Then we saw a measure of inflation, the personal consumption expenditure PCE. That's the Fed's favorite measure of inflation. It actually dropped 0.2% from December to January, so it was a negative 2.2% reading. And then the year-over-year -year reading dropped from 1.2% to only 0.7%. Inflation is very tepid. We almost have non-existent inflation. That's very bond-friendly news long-term, so that was good there. Then we saw a report on housing. CoreLogic re released their home price index report for December 2014. It showed home prices nationally increased by about 5.02% year over year. This shows that home price appreciation is stabilized. We're right about the 5% range over the last three months. That's good news because that is sustainable. Now, home prices, even though we've been appreciating, are still 13.4% below their peak at 06. So that means it's still a great time to buy a home. Interest rates are at all time record lows. Home prices are going up and there's still room for them to keep moving up. So get out there and buy a home. You're going to pay a mortgage. The question is, who mortgage are you going to pay? Your landlords or you want to pay your own, get all the tax benefits and get the appreciation as the market moves up. Um, now, USDA Rural Housing Loans. Those uh, get submitted to rural development to be underwritten. 
their current turn times, they are, as of February 8th, they are working on files submitted January 23rd. So that's about a 15-day lag. You need to know that when planning your contract closing date. You got an extra 15 days at least on the end for USDA to review and clear the file. So plan accordingly. In the local news, the next First Time Homebuyer Seminar is Wednesday, February 11th in Laurel, Maryland from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the North Laurel Community Center. And then the next one in Towson is Saturday, February 28th from 10 a.m. to noon at the Sheraton Baltimore North Hotel. You can register for either one of those events by giving us a call at 410-412-3319 or register online www.marylandhomebuyerseminars.com. Look forward to seeing you guys next week.